one of the live viewers is commenting that they believe that in the past you recommended or not maybe recommended, but agreed that maybe a small amount of animal products in the diet was okay, maybe not optimum. And they're wondering if somebody has cancer, would you suggest no animal products whatsoever? Well, thanks for the question. It was never the case that I'm recommending a small amount of animal products for a person's health. That was not the case. It was in the book, Eat to Live, I allowed people to have a small amount of animal products so the book wouldn't be seen as a total vegan book. So I'd allow people to make dietary improvements without making a choice up front whether they want to be a vegan or not. So I wanted to allow people to say, yes, you can do a nutritarian diet and not be 100% vegan. Do it, do it to this degree and still have a little bit of animal product in your diet if you don't want to give up animal products. But it's better to do it to that degree and not give up animal products than to do it not at all. So many people, when faced with the challenge of giving up everything, will say, I'm not going to do it at all then, right? So yes, the, but, but if you ask me the direct question, do I think it's better to be 100% vegan or to use like animal products once a week or so? Then the answer would be, well, I don't know, but I have to go to what science is available on that subject and see what the evidence says. And the evidence we have from the seven-day Adventist Health Study 2 demonstrates that even once a week serving of animal products does, inc does increase risk, particularly of cardiovascular death. So, and most likely of, now I particularly would be advising a 100% vegan diet for a person with a cancer diagnosis because we know animal protein, particularly the amino acid methionine, can be promoting cancer, can allow cancer cell replication. Remember I talked earlier in this, um, in this discussion we're having that we wanna suffocate the cancer cell's ability to replicate. And we suffocate that replication with these compounds, these curcumin and compounds from, from turmeric and green tea and mushroom extracts. We, we, and we, we suffocate them so they can't replicate. Likewise, by keeping the protein low, it makes them also harder to replicate, which means that we're not only avoiding all animal products, we're also avoiding um, plant products that are concentrated in protein, that are too high in protein. You don't wanna take a protein powder supplement with, with, a, with a cancer, and we even will restrict soy and hemp seeds um, and Mediterranean pine nuts because they're so high in protein, we're going to, and even total bean intake will keep to a mat to a to a half a cup a day or less. A half a cup a day of beans will particularly um, will restrict soybeans to small amounts and restrict the higher protein nuts like hemp seeds to a smaller amount too, because we want the protein to be moderately restricted, not so restricted that a person is going to get malnutrition and not get immune and suppress immune function where IGF one gets too low. But we're moderating it to the perfect level where it's too low to allow cancer cell replication, to allow cancer cells to flourish, but not so low that the person gets muscle wasting and immune system to um, interfere with immune function. So you know that this, this is the art here, is that even we know that um, nutritional, um, that plant-based diets lower IGF-1 and fasting lowers IGF-1, but if it gets too low, if IGF-1 gets too low, that could suppress immunity to a degree to allow, to allow it to be worse. So it's knowing at what degree of suppression is at the right level where we don't overly suppress immune function. So it's moderate protein restriction, and we do that, yes, with where animal protein would be the worst thing a person could do with cancer. Well, I don't even want to tell you what they're recommending I eat at the cancer center I go to and what I should eat specifically to gain weight because you would just help smoke would come out of your ears. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's really. Yeah. I'll tell you what. We're dealing with people who really have a kindergarten level of nutritional exposure, right? They really, they haven't spent their, anyway, it's just very frustrating. They wanted me to gain 10 pounds, which I did. And I ate the, the things that you would recommend, healthy fats like nuts and seeds and avocado. But they wanted me to put coconut oil in my coffee. And I said, I, I don't drink coffee. And they go, well, just take a spoonful of it every day. Well, <laughs> they're not the people you should be asking for or following the nutritional recommendations of, which you know that I know. I wasn't asking. They were telling, you know, <laughs> yeah, so right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. You're asking a dietitian working in a cancer session who's who to, to eat with a disease is like anyway.
Well, I, I should have said, well, why don't I just go to the vending machine in the infusion center? I'm sure those snacks would be appropriate. Anyway, you got to have a sense of humor. So, And you know what I'm saying that obviously the concentration of nutrients in your cells are enhanced with weight loss. Because the larger you get, the more it dilutes, the more fat you put on your body, fat cells sequester nutrients away from the cancer cells. So any rapid weight gain isn't can't going to be muscle tissue. It's going to be fat. And fat and weight may be helpful a person, under, you know, so it's we, it's, we can get into that, but it's not worth it. We're talking about people with chemotherapy because chemotherapy can damage digestive cells in the, in the digestive tract. So now you can't digest food. So they're seeing people, they're damaging because cancers, because chemotherapy damages cells that are replicating. And we replenish the cells that line the digestive tract every three to seven days, every three to six days, let's say. So that's the fastest growing cells in the body. So when you take chemo, you damage the lining of the digestive tract. And now you can't digest food well. And so they want people eating more food and eating, getting, keeping fat. So when they can't eat food, they're not going to waste away. So it's really, it's confusing, but they don't know what they're doing.